So one of the ways we develop servant leaders is by developing servants. I think it can be a dangerous thing to say to somebody, you know, I think you have leadership potential. I'm going to develop you into a leader. You see, what is that person liable to start thinking? He might start thinking, or she might start thinking, hmm, I'm pretty good, aren't I? He thinks I'm a leader, so I must be better than other people, right? So I'm going to be a leader. Those other folks, they're not going to be leaders. See, see you can kind of create an expectation there that's actually not healthy. And so what I prefer to do is not even just talk so much about I'm going to develop somebody into a leader. I would rather say I want to help develop you to be a better servant. And so when I find a person who's willing to be a better servant, whatever that job is, you know, better, better counselor, better teacher, better manager of a ministry, I'm helping you be a better servant. My experience is try and train a leader, you may get a big ego. Train a servant and you'll probably get a leader, a servant leader. And those leaders will begin to emerge. You may train a lot of people to be servants, but you'll begin to see who those ones are, have that ability where others follow, where they're exemplary in their character, where they, they, they go the extra mile, they have the extra faithfulness, the extra giftedness, the teachability we were talking about. And they begin to emerge, and then you begin to invest in those more. So I like to talk more about servant development, and then, as you see, those people emerging as leaders invest in them. George Patterson, I mentioned him to you before as a person who had worked in the Honduras and, and had, through training of leaders, mobilizing leaders uh, through a theological education by extension program, saw a hundred uh, churches being planted. And he wrote this, beware of traditional educational objectives that focus on educating a man, or a woman for that matter. Biblical education objectives seek to edify the church. Now that's profound. Especially in Western cultures that tend to be more individualistic, we tend to focus on the person. I'm going to invest in you as a person and help you as a person develop. Well, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but if we read the Bible carefully, for example, 1 Corinthians 12, it talks about the gifts being given for the edification of the body of Christ. In other words, in fact, he talks about people who are using their spiritual gifts to build themselves up. He says, that's not the point. Your spiritual gift isn't given so you get built up and you feel more important. It's not about you. The spiritual gifts are given are given so that the body of Christ is built up, so that others are served. And so the idea that I think Patterson is getting at here is you train people, you develop people in ways that they are practically building up the body of Christ and they're not just being built up individually. And that means the way I train them is going to be directly connected with serving again. So I don't necessarily isolate a person, train them, build them up, and then try and then insert them back into service. This is one of the challenges, of course, we face with more traditional theological education. Uh, we sort of take a, a person out of their natural place of service, out of their church, and we'll put them in a Bible school or a seminary, and they're sort of isolated there for a few years. And then we say, well, after three or four years, we made you into a leader, right? Now we send you back into the church. And of course, I'm describing this a little extreme. Most schools nowadays have practical training alongside. We found out that just doesn't work. Uh, but even more so within the context of the local church, we want to connect up the developing of people directly with the developing of the church. And constantly we're underlining, it's not about you as an individual. It's not about you being a better servant. It's about the body being built up. And so the way we train will always be connected to real needs with real people, with real issues in the church, and not hypothetical ones that don't allow us to actually apply that in service. So I found that to be a very, very helpful concept. One more item here on the whole idea of the character of leadership is 
a saying that I've heard, you teach what you know, you reproduce who you are. Do you get the difference? You teach what you know. You see, you can, <clears throat> you can get knowledge from one person's head into another person's head, but you reproduce who you are. It's not really adequate just to transfer knowledge from my head into somebody else's head. That can be taught, but if I want to really reproduce servant leaders, I have to be one myself. Because people are going to follow what I do and not just what I say. They're going to get the knowledge, but they're going to look at my life and say, what does his life, what does her life look like the way they use that knowledge? Character is not something that can be just taught with a certain amount of Bible knowledge. Character is more caught by having role models of seeing life in action, of seeing people serving, living out the character of Christ, of who we really are. And so as a teacher, or as a person who's seeking to help develop others in their Christ-like character and their ability to serve, I have to always be looking at my own life and saying, am I living out what I'm trying to expect in other people's lives? While we continue being a benevolent project, your kind donations will continue to be vital in fulfilling the calling of TVS ministry. We do count on your gracious support and cooperation. For detailed information, please visit tvsseminary.com. One more point in connection with this idea of you teach what you know, but you reproduce who you are. I think of what the Apostle Paul said, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. And that's a pretty, pretty tall order there. That means I have to be a follower of Christ and others will hopefully imitate that which is Christ-like in me. But on this idea of being a servant uh, leader, there was a question we had, so... Um, Quite often we notice that uh, culture around us really much influences our churches, our church leadership styles. So, uh, and you, man you mentioned about uh, servant leadership, servanthood. And what are the way, what are the measured methods, how we can go from authoritarian leadership style to the servant leader style? Mm -hmm. Well, again, I, I think there's a wide range of styles of leadership that God can bless. But at the same time, we do have these character guidelines in Scripture. And so the first thing I would say is study Scripture. Sometimes we see Paul being a pretty strong leader. Uh, in the way he writes the churches and expects them to change certain things. So he can be a pretty strong leader. But you see in the Apostle Paul, he's always willing, he always has the best of what is good for the church in mind. He's not trying to put himself forward as something like he's better than others or to defend himself just because uh, somebody has attacked him. It's always a concern for the gospel. So I think one thing that can be done is just to study the scriptures and look at the way leaders in the Bible, whether it was Moses or the Apostle Paul or Jesus, the way that they exercise leadership in helpful ways or hurtful ways. Not all the leaders in the Bible were, were good leaders. So studying the Bible is, is one thing and then really praying that God would, would give us a heart uh, of service and servanthood and humility. Humility is the real key, I think, to the whole the whole idea here. And again, I think some leaders are fearful. They're a little fearful that if they relax their control over everything that's going on in their church, that somehow everything's going to turn into chaos. Um, that's usually not the case. Uh, when we see things developing in a negative way, yeah, we need to act. But I think sometimes there's a fear there. And sometimes there's an ego our ego, we want to be the people who control things. But learning to trust God and learning to see God at work in people's lives and help them develop that, you know, that's something that, 
people just need to pray for. So um, I think that's a good question for each person or each church in their own culture to kind of answer for themselves. It's very hard for me as an outsider, you know, to say how what that will look like in your culture. But I think studying the scripture and praying a lot uh, will be the route to get there. Thank you. All right.